Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today's video, how to build a servo winch. Uh, I did one of these earlier today, uh, so you're going to need a servo. Uh, whatever kilogram rating you want to go with, I guess, it's kind of up to you, but the higher the kilogram rating, the stronger it's going to be, obviously. Like this is a four and a half uh, kilo, I believe it is. Uh, so it's pretty good for even pulling my SCX-10. Um, keep in mind with winches, even in real life, they're not technically designed for uh, vertical pulling. But you can do it and get away with it, but just keep in mind, you're only getting half of the pull weight when you're going vertical as opposed to a horizontal pull, which you would get basically the entire usage. Um, but anyways, you're going to need a sewing machine bobbin. You can buy these at a lot of different places that carry sewing machine products. Um, you're also going to need a round metal plate uh, servo horn, okay? And... Uh, Sometimes you'll get screws with them, sometimes you don't, okay, uh, but they are threaded too, which is kind of nice, but I even have nuts on mine just for extra reinforcement, and uh, the bobbin is going to have to have a slight modification to it, because it's not a perfect lineup, and uh, then you can get your bolts in on either side, and two bolts is more than enough to uh, hold the bobbin in there for a lot of good strong pulling, but if you really want a mod for four, you can do it. Anyway, so let's get uh, to business here. So I've already saved a little bit of time pulling the screws out. So I'm going to pop the top off the servo. Now, not every servo is going to be the same uh, for doing this. Okay, uh, some servos are metal geared, and of course this one's plastic geared. And uh, so you want to take all the pieces out of there first. Now you'll notice there's like a, a cross hatch or even a single line. Uh, in here, you're going to have to drill that down a bit uh, so that it gets past the controller. Okay, this is basically uh, part of what activates it for forward and backwards. Now, before you go and drill any holes first, make sure you clean the servo up as best as you can, okay? So you're going to have to get any grease out of there because you gotta do, have to do some gluing. Now, you may have to take your servo completely apart and um, to get all the grease out and uh, let me just put the camera uh, be right back instant okay so I had to get some Kleenex for this so you want to get as much of that grease out of the way as possible like I said you may have to take the whole servo apart but I think we're going to be okay with this one so We'll find out, that's for sure. Does it look like we can seal that? Yeah, looks like we should be able to. Okay, so you're going to need a power source and a receiver, as well as, of course, radio. Before you do anything to any of these gears, you got to make sure that you glue this so that it's not going to move again, or a chance of moving. Part of the idea of drilling this thing out, too, is it's going to help with that. And we're going to go with channel 1. And we have no response out of this. Okay. There we go. So you see as you move the the knob or the dial, the little gear motors are running here, right? Okay, so now we've got it straightened out. So make sure that you centered your radio before you mess with this, okay? So we've got it on here. Radio is centered now. Boom, it stops moving. Now that you got that, we're going to take some CA glue or crazy glue. You can use either one. And you're going to put a few drops on either side of this. Okay. So, well, that's now curing up. That's going to take probably about, 
I don't know, 10 minutes to fully cure. Turn the radio off, receiver's off, get that out of the way. Now, next thing we're going to need is a 564th drill bit, which I should have very handy right in here. Now to size up your drill bit too, take the drill bit, put the back end of it to the hole, and that looks like it's going to be a pretty perfect fit, so we're going to go with this drill bit. My last servo I did too was 564 ths Now this is where things can get a little tricky, so you may want to have a vise. Okay, you, maybe not, it just depends. Uh, but you also have this little notch that has to be removed as well. So let's see if we've got enough, uh, actually we do have more than enough space for this. Just line the notch up so that that can't twist too easy. Okay, so now that's set in there. Also hold the key, the, the gears in your fingers like this too, just as a safety. And you want to have hardly any pressure on this drill at all. Okay, and keep it as straight up and down as possible. And it's going to catch at times. Pick out some of this plastic. Oh, still got a little bit more to go. At this point, you can also opt out to hold it in your hand too. Like I said, make sure you put hardly any pressure because this will catch. Just a little bit more to go. I don't know how much of this you can see on camera, but I'm doing my best. A little bit more. Almost there. You don't want to over drill either because that's going to cause a big problem like no strength. Okay, let's just do this by hand. Okay, so when you're done, it should look something like this. Okay, so you've pretty well got rid of every bit of that little cross hatch there. In this case, it's about 99% gone. Okay, so now that's done. Now we've got to get rid of this little tang here. So, for that, we're going to need a knife and a lighter. Do not use a soldering iron to do this. This is going to be a pretty, well, fairly precision cut. 
but you got to get rid of that stopper otherwise your servo also won't turn 360 degrees. Okay, so now we've gotten that part down. Now we gotta reheat the blade and we gotta snip the rest of it out. Very careful because you don't want to mess with the teeth. And looks like we got her good. Perfect. All right. So now, we are seem to be missing a pin. Ah, it's in the gear. Good. Alright, so, small gear in. This gear goes in. There she goes. Now, like I said, not every servo is going to work the same way. Some servos like metal geared servo, sometimes you can just pop out that cross hatch piece. Um, it's usually like pressure fit in there type of deal. Because that area does not go under any real stress. Now metal geared servos too, uh, you're going to have a, a pin that has to be pulled out. Uh, or you're going to have to snip it out, wh whichever. Okay, But it's the same sort of thing you've got to accomplish making that space in there perfectly round so that the main gear can spin on there and uh, then you're good to go and like I said you got to glue that um, potentiometer in place too that's very important because under a lot of banging or whatever you know if that thing moves on you then it'll just keep spinning out of control right so you want to make sure you've got control okay so we'll plug the servo back in now and uh, I'm going to put a servo horn on here just so you guys can see. Okay, power on, servo does not move. Now you have a 360 degree servo. That's all there is to it, guys. Very easy to do. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and hope you got a lot out of that. So, if you want to build a servo winch, or a 360 degree servo for other purposes, that's how it's done. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.